Since the Sony FX30 launch, there's been a lot of misinformation and falsehoods on the internet about this camera. I want to address some of those in today's video. Everywhere I go, the people really want to know who I is and who I be. They stop and stare when they see me. If I said it once, no need to repeat. Run up on me, watch you fall to your knees. Tip my hat when it's time for the kill. Hi everyone, my name is Wynn. Welcome back to my channel. On my channel, I talk about camera, gear, and travel. In today's video, I'm gonna to touch on the FX30 and some of the things that I've heard about it that are not true that I'd like to correct. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Please consider subscribing, and as you watch the video, please hit the thumbs up. Let's get started. The FX30 has been a point of confusion for a lot of people. Or maybe it's a contention, maybe not confusion. A lot of people see this camera as a top level APS-C camera from Sony. When the camera was launched, it was launched on the cinema line. Now, of course, consumers, we tend to take a different take on things. We look at things and decide, this is what my use case is gonna be and why it's going to work for me. But then you have folks like myself, who are here on YouTube and are giving you information about what we think is best for the camera and the use case and who it would be good for. What I've been seeing though is a lot of misinformation from some channels when people talk about the camera and what it can and it can't do. I've seen information in the fact that it doesn't have a dual based ISO system. Some people are saying that it can't shoot raw. Some people complain about the fact that it only shoots one frame at a time. Now, this camera is designed mostly for movies. Yes, it takes photos, but if you watch the Sony presentation, they didn't speak much about the photo side. And when they did, in a sense, they basically are saying, you can use this when you're scouting location to take stills and so on. Pretty much, it's a movie camera. Now, is movies all it was designed to take? No, it shoots video, so whether you wanna use it for video, you can. You wanna do it YouTube talking head like I'm doing right here? You can do this. You wanna walk out in the street and you wanna film content out there? You can do that as well. The capabilities of the camera is very good. It can work in both low light and bright sunlight, giving you really good quality images. If you've seen Jason Wong video about his visit to Japan, the quality on that video is really awesome. Now, oh, sure, um, he's done some editing on that, okay? The camera takes great quality, but if you know how to grade your photo, you can make it pop. So, if you're someone who's looking for a camera and you're just starting out, is this camera for you? It might not be, but from a price point perspective, you're thinking you like this camera and you really want to buy one. A couple things to keep in mind. Are you looking for a camera that can shoot multiple photos? If so, eh, not for you, okay? If you're the kind of photographer who likes to slow down, take one shot at a time, bing, this will work for you. On the video side of things, if you don't know how to grade and you don't want to work about grading, there is the Essence Tone as well as a bunch of other picture profiles. You can just select them and shoot. And it works perfectly, okay? We all have our different tastes in how we like things to look. You can have your HDR look, your standard look, your flat. You have so many options inside this camera that you can work with. If you decide that you want to grow into filming and making your own little mini movies or full-fledged movies, this camera will work for you. Now, most people tend to keep the camera for a long period of time and learn the features as they go along. If you're that kind of person, ding, 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 this camera is for you. Why do I say that? Again, cinema-based camera. Doesn't mean it can only do one thing, you can grow into it. Now, for those of you or people who are already cinematographers, you're probably gonna get this as your B camera. You probably don't need me to watch my channel. If you look at this means that this guy is always talking about, I, I can get it if you wanna tune out and move along. That's fine. This is for more of the people who are looking at this camera price point wise. If you're still with me and you already have some big cameras, 
and you're thinking about the FX30, guess what? This thing is pretty much as capable as the FX3 and the A7 S3. Light capabilities works fine. Is it going to shoot in moonlight at 12,800 ISO and look fantastic? No, wasn't designed to do that. If you're wondering, like most of the people, watch the Sony video. There's information about what the camera can do, and they've shown some test cases. But if you're already at that level, you already know how to use your camera. You probably hear like, "Hey, what is this crazy guy talking about?" I get it. Now. As you grow in video and you're worried about audio, because audio is very important, right? The handle makes sense. I'm using the audio handle to record right now. Even though you see this microphones here, I like to do backup. Sometimes I just use the lavalier only. Sometimes I use the uh, shotgun microphone in the camera. The AC is running right now. So sometimes, you know, depends on where the microphone is located. You need a backup system that you're able to tweak it. Not saying to go and buy the stuff, but you know, if you don't have it, you may want to get something in the future, but the handle by itself is a good investment. My understanding is that right now you can't find a camera body only. The extra 400 bucks is worth it. You can buy a DAT microphone or whatever microphone you can put in there, or even if you already have lavalier microphone and you want to plug it in, there's a slot on the handle that you can plug the microphone in. So you're covered there as well. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's cover the low light performance. Since the beginning, there's been a lot of talk about this camera isn't good in low light, blah, 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 blah. Hmm. You've tried a dual base ISO and it doesn't work. Okay. Do you know that the dual base ISO was designed mainly for, guess what? Controlled lighting situations. Again, cinema camera. If you have it in a regular mode and you shoot with it, base ISO changes. It's not the same as in the cinema mode, or let's call it the Cine EI mode, okay? Once we've covered that, you can get a better understanding. It is not a low light monster in a typical sense. It doesn't do low light videos like you'll find on the A7S III or the FX3. No, doesn't do that. If you want to shoot low light, it can do that. But just remember, you probably want to put it in a flexible ISO mode to use that or put it in auto mode and let the camera kind of handle things. You will get some grain out of it. If you have a good video editor, you can clean that up. Not a problem. If you're shooting and expecting everything to be perfect all at once, most cases it's not going to be. And I say most cases, we're talking still low light, not your everyday bright light stuff. It's perfect out there. Knowing this, I bought this camera so I can utilize it at nighttime as well as daytime. And if you see my past videos that I did at nighttime, you'll see that this camera performs very well. And I've also have some footage in there where I've added some noise reduction so you can see how things look when you clean up a bit. I wanted to show people what it was like. My share my video about the Cine EI, go watch that one so you can see for yourself what I'm talking about. So now let's talk about Cine EI. If you get into the movie side of things and you want to do some editing, you can turn on the LUT and you can bake the LUT into the footage and that's great. Less work for you guys, no muss, no fuss, you're good. However, if you'd like to do some grading, you can turn off the LUT and then put it inside your software and grade to your heart's content. It takes great images. And if you're worried about the noise, you can clean that up. That's easy stuff. As long as you know what you're doing. Most editors have some amount of noise reduction feature inside of it, or you can purchase noise reduction software to help you to clean up the noise if you're someone who just like no noise at all. All right? Tons of stuff out that you can work with. If you're really interested in this camera, don't listen to all the noise out there. Listen to people gonna tell you the facts. Go to Sony's website, watch their video on how to use this camera and you can learn some things from there. Us YouTubers are telling you things from our opinion. A lot of folks don't own the camera. They get it to play around with, 
to do a video. They do the video, they move on, they don't purchase it. Some do, not because I hate everybody don't, but you hear from a lot of other people who are giving you information about which camera is best and why it should work for you and so on and so forth, top five, blah, blah. Okay, they've passed through cameras and they've tested them, they've played around with them. They don't own it. So they can't tell you about all the functionality of the camera, so keep that in mind. I like the camera. The Sydney EI features works well for me and I use it a lot, especially in situations like this. Do I need to grade? No, but I'm forcing myself to learn how to do this stuff. And when it comes to low light, I think that's where it gets a bit more challenging. And if I can conquer that, then the normal bright videos for me, meh, gravy. So if you like what I've said so far and you think that this camera will suit your needs, get it. You won't be disappointed. I can tell you that right now. If you want to film videos, movies, documentary, camera is great for that. If you want to shoot your YouTube videos at home, great for that as well. Just remember, if you're going to dive into the Cine EI features, get some light. And typically when I use Cine EI mode, I'm shooting manual. You can put it in auto mode if you like. Eh, functionality is there. But if you want to really, you know, learn things, you go to manual and you control that. But as a starter, take your time, play around with it, see what it's like. I think you'll like it. I love it. Anyway, taking off. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching the video. Smile on the face, put in my place, but at Gully on cyber space. Let's pump brakes, let's be frank. Running after him when you're the chase.